Hey guys, welcome to Need It Make It. I'm Mike. So today we've got some trouble in 3D printer land. I printed these brackets for a friend of mine and they're meant to be mounted to a radio which is not normally portable in order to make it so that you can bring it anywhere with you and it's fairly well protected. And after these parts were printed, I sent him a short video showing that there's some flexibility there and it gave us a good amount of confidence that these were the right solution. So he came over, we went to mount these to the radio and I turned around for 10 seconds to grab the screwdriver to mount them. And in that 10 seconds, he had taken one and broken it. So I was pretty disappointed, but it made me wonder whether this is really the right solution to the problem or if it is the right solution, but not well enough designed. So in this video, I'd like to use this model to identify all of the different weak points that there may be. And then we'll come up with a few different solutions to those problems, including one very unique solution as well. So stick around. So let's be honest here. The main reason that this broke is because we flexed it too much before it was mounted to the radio. Because if we're mounting it with these two screws to a pretty solid steel case, it's not going to be able to flex like we did it. But from a different perspective, if I were to make this and send it to a customer and they paid good money for it, I would want to flex it when it arrived. I'd want to see how how much protection it could offer to my very expensive radio. So it really should be made so that it can be somewhat flexible and not break. And part of that is the material that's chosen. So I think what we need to do is make sure that it's strong enough no matter what material it's printed with, whether it be ABS, PLA, or PETG as well. Have you clicked that subscribe button yet? If you haven't, make sure that you do and hit that notification bell as well to make sure that you know when a new video gets released. The way I like to think of the layer lines in a 3D print is just like I would think about building something from a piece of wood. So here we have some chunks of pine and this is the direction of the grain along the length. And here we have some where the grain is running along the width. So if I try and take the piece that's running along the length and then break it, it's nearly impossible to break. If I take these which are from the same board and I try and break it where the grain is running along the width, it's very easy to break. We can have some of the same problems with our 3D prints that we can have with wood. So it's a good idea to treat them like they're wood and treat the layer lines as if they are the grain lines. The areas that look like they're the most troublesome for us are in this small cross section here. This is not continuous right through. It's offset nearly the entire width. If we try and twist this and we're torquing it, that's torquing and not torquing. It's very likely that this section is going to break. There's another area which is fairly weak looking, but I don't think it's as problematic, which is right in here. It's the same issue, but because it's somewhat reinforced, there are these large areas here, which are preventing a lot of that twisting motion. And these are needed for some type of venting, I believe. And there's one other section, which I think could be done a little bit differently. And that's right in here. Although it has a fair amount of connection from one layer to the next, this is an area which can take quite a bit of abuse. If you were to drop the radio, this is the area it's going to fall on either this section or on the back section. Let's go ahead and get into the design and I'm gonna show you a few different options that we can use to make this a lot stronger. As far as I can tell, this is the original model. So this was designed by IU10PK and released back in 2021. It looks pretty much like the one that I printed, although the version here does not look like it's FDM printed. It's because they are offering a professional grade version made from nylon and that is for sale. So this area here is a little bit of a concern to me. I, I think this should be much more of a swooping curve and that's what we're going to transition this into. So I'm going to take this front piece off and I'm going to extend this as a much more gradual swooping curve. And then hopefully we get something that is a little bit stronger in the end. So the first thing to do is take this mesh and convert it mesh and we'll convert it to a solid. When you take something like this with faces that are fairly uniform and you slice it, it ends up converting it into a very usable model again, which is really nice. It's super clean. So this is the original front section, which would take some abuse and I'm going to remove that and then I'm going to sweep. And then we have a much more gradual curve, which should be quite a bit stronger. So I think the thought process here and it's a good idea, is to make the left hand and right hand sides identical. There's only one download, but in this case, it makes the part quite a bit weaker. So right away, we can remove one of these pieces. 
and then we can fill that void. So the first idea is let's keep it as absolutely strong as we can and we are going to just rotate this piece 90 degrees. There's something that doesn't look right to me and I think it's just not high enough. So what I think we need to do is also have this rail continuous on this side and then we'll add an additional loop that comes up and above. That way this thing will be incredibly strong. The next option is similar to the first, except we'll position the strap section at an angle to the model. I've also elongated the ends where they connect to the rails just to give it a little bit more strength. And the last option is to print everything completely flat, but I've extended the section in the middle by four millimeters, and then we'll do a little experimentation to see if we can get something that looks like the original, but is far stronger. I've also added a tiny void in the middle section of the print on the two outside rails. That's going to make sure that it's completely filled and there is no infill in this area. All of the prints have finished and I've printed each of these with no fans on whatsoever to try and get the strongest parts possible. So here is a test piece of PET G. I've printed this again with no fans on. This particular one does have a little bit of infill and this is what we're going to use as a tester before I go ahead and ruin or potentially ruin this one. So first up, I'm going to just heat this up with a heat gun kind of evenly and I have these forms and we'll just see what happens when we put them in the forms. I'll also heat the forms up just a little bit. These are made from ABS. For a little warm up, I'm going to do the sloping ends. We're trying to reproduce this type of effect. The section is cool enough so we can remove that form. And that turned out really nice. So that's what it looks like with supports underneath. It's pretty rough. Pet G is usually pretty difficult to get your supports to turn out nice. And after about, what, five minutes? All right, so I think we're ready to move up to the more difficult part. Here is the form and you notice that I have these two pins. This pin back here belongs to this back section. I'm gonna warm this up and then get it to a point where it's sagging. And I should just be able to load it in and compress the two ends towards the center. And it should give me a little bit of a dip in the middle. If everything goes well, I'll be able to put this on and get that into the vise. Again, like the last one, I'm just gonna go ahead and let this cool for about 10 minutes. It's been about 10 minutes or so, and it's cooled down quite a bit now. From reading a little bit about Pet G, if we want it to be less brittle, dry your spools really well, but then print with as little fan as possible. But we're actually gonna see if any of that helps at all, because we're gonna go ahead and try and break each of these. So the first test is the very original design, and this is a little bit shorter. So what I'm gonna do is clamp it back here so that the length that extends beyond is irrelevant. Two and a half pounds at a time. So I've attached only to one corner because I'd like to get a little bit of twisting motion in there as well, not just bending. Two and a half pounds, it's holding. Okay, so we're up to five pounds. Whew. Five pounds. Seven and a half pounds, let's see, 10 pounds. I am, I'm a little impressed with this. I printed this with no fans. The original one was printed with fans on it. So let's, 12 and a half pounds, 15 pounds. Here's another five pounds. This is 20 pounds, 20 pounds, 
22 and a half pounds. Mod number one, I'm gonna jump right to five pounds. 10 pounds. Fifteen pounds. This is twenty pounds. This is the maximum of the other one. Okay, we'll do twenty two and a half. I'm gonna put some safety glasses on. 25. 27 and a half pounds. Whoa. 30 pounds. I have to get some more weight. I'm gonna go 35. 35. <laughs> it's permanently deformed. This is good. This is good. It's not cracking, it's stretching. So we had a failure at 35 pounds, so we got to 30 pounds. Next test is mod number two. Mod number two has the, the angled strap area. So it should be a little bit more rigid and probably more likely to fracture. Let's find out. So five. There's actually 15 on this one. This is the final one. This is the one that we formed. So do you have a prediction? My guess is that it's gonna flex a lot. I don't know if that first one performed really well. Five pounds. Ten pounds. Fifteen pounds. The original design came in at 20 pounds, the Mod 1 flat with double straps at 30, the Mod 2 angled with double straps at 15, and the poor formed version at 10 pounds. The original design was fairly flexible along the entire stick out. Having printed it with no fans, it performed far better than what I expected it to. The Mod 1 was the only version that did not fracture and may have been able to withstand more force had I not left 30 pounds on there for three minutes. Mod number two was more rigid and only flexible towards the end and stress was concentrated just beyond the strap area where it broke. Mod three, our experiment didn't go as I had hoped. I think we have a combo of issues here. One is that I made the middle far more rigid, again, concentrating the stress. In addition, heating the material like I did probably weakened it. I would have been better to create a full ABS form and then anneal it in the oven and let it cool slowly. And that's okay, we still have a clear winner and that's mod number two, which will be uploaded as the remix. So guys, even though this kind of conceptual idea didn't turn out, I still learned quite a bit. And I don't think I'll be going down this path unless any of you have a better way of doing this 
or if you have experience with the annealing process and you can give me some tips and tricks on how to make that work properly. But oftentimes the simplest solution is the best and the first mod that we did seemed to perform the best. Let me know what you think in the comment section or whether you have some ideas of your own. I was trying to stick with the original design as much as I could, but realistically I could have just started from scratch and probably come up with something a little bit better. But that is a job for another video. So guys, I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks to all my patrons for helping to support this channel and making videos like this possible. Take care, everybody, and we will see you on the next one.